step back. Yeah, the not to bring that up. I'm sorry. I'm just saying I'm, that's where I've heard of it. But yeah. but side, go go on. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm happy to talk about that in the context of the body not recognizing certain components. But the idea is, our immune system has been with us for millions of years, and it has several different arms to it. There's well, there's two main arms to it, but it's incredibly intricate. It's incredibly. Um, delicate. It has been designed over millions of years to be conserved. We don't want to use energy to, we don't want to expend energy in the human body because we have to survive. It's it's kind of evolutionary of 101. Of course. You want to keep things quiet so that you save energy and you can, you know, focus on running for food or hiding from a cyber tooth tiger or what have you. So what we have is the immune system has maintained its ability to be quiet until it's needed. The problem that we're seeing now in very, very simplistic terms is that we have now lots of lots of things, but I will focus mostly on the environmental chemicals that are all around us. We have upwards of 95,000, you know, rough estimate in all of the products and cosmetics and personal care that are around us that are not regulated by the U.S market. There's no regulations. There's no required testing for safety or toxicity in most of these products, if not all. I mean, certainly personal care, cosmetics, and food, we can go on to that. But these chemicals have not been part of our human experience, Uh our human exposure for 75 years. Really, only in 75 years, after millions of years of our immune system doing its job and doing it well. What happens is all of these chemicals, and we have plenty of science to support this. I didn't make this up. The, all of these chemicals are instigating the body in ways that we never would have expected. That until we studied, we didn't understand. But now we understand, even at the cellular level, many of these classes of chemicals are actually able to cr- increase inflammation, to instigate the immune system. And sometimes when it's instigated, the immune system doesn't get it right. It attacks tissue that are called self antigens because it thinks it's getting confused. It's getting triggered by the chemicals that look similar to antigens or or, or tissue in the human body. Hence the mimicry so one part mechanism. of that term you just mentioned. I Correct. got it. I understand. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's mimicking. And there's other components of how many of these chemicals work because we now know individually how groups work because they're being tested by academic centers, third party, not our government, not manufacturing. Uh We're sort of chasing around the problem to come up with this data because we now know there's even other mechanisms of how inflammation is triggered through environmental exposures at low levels over dis, you know, over time, right. not just high exposures. Let's let's yeah. actually address this inflammation piece real quick. <clears throat> I go to the gym, I do legs. The next day, I'm super sore. I have delayed onset muscle soreness. A couple of days, yeah. third day, I'm feeling better, and I have an acute localized inflammatory response, right? And if mm-hmm. I get sick, I get the flu. I, I get this this infla- release of inflammatory proteins as part of my immune system, and this is acute and it's guided. But this, what is, so it's when it's chronic and low-grade inflammatory, that's when you're in real trouble, right? And that's this dysregulation piece with the immune For system. For sure. For sure. You got it. You got it, Jillian. Because here's the thing. We have a normal response to trauma, where whether it's workouts or whether it's a cold or flu. We want to be able to respond to those types of activities or invaders. What we don't want is the immune system constantly activated, even at a low level, to everyday low-level exposures, because when we actually need it, we don't want to waste that energy. Wow. So there's a low level exposure to these chemicals from a lot of products that we use and do and in- consume and put on our skin and spray in the air every day uh-huh. that's really kind of in- instigating these immune low level immune responses. The question is, when do you tip over to illness, to disease, to clinical stuff that you see, touch and feel? That has a lot of factors involved. That has a lot to do with genetics. That has a lot to do with your lifestyle sleeping and washing out chemicals at night, which is so critical, stress reduction, gut microbiome but improvement. So, no, which I, I have questions know. about all this. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Got it. Sorry, Doc. Hold I'm on. getting excited, Hold Jillian. On. I'm getting no, too I'm excited. I'm... Getting the shower head with the carbon block because you don't technically spend so much time in the shower. And then putting that money that could be a 10000 or $8,000, $6,000 whole house filtration investment, take that money 
and put it into like a dozen other things that cost money, I you know? See. So that's kind yes. of how I rationalize it. Like a re I reverse understand. osmosis, you know, it's $300, plumber is 150. You can do that in an hour. And so those are the real, the and real And you should be there. cooking with this water. Right. You should be drinking right. this water. And then you can right. put a shower head on instead of investing in a whole home filtration system, which can be thousands of dollars. If you have the money, then by all means, great. Okay. And the top filter you recommend is reverse osmosis. Yeah. The technology for reverse osmosis is so interesting because it's basically, and anyone can think of this, it's just a really small poured material. It has tiny, tiny, tiny little pores. So it's catching the bad guys, right? So reverse osmosis, actually, fun fact, was developed in the 70s for people who were on dialysis, which are kidney machines in case their kidneys didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I know this because my dad is a nephrologist and he's still practicing, 85 years old. He manages kidneys and kidney disease. Wow. And he brought dialysis to New Jersey in the mid 70s when, he, when it was developed. And here's the thing. They were federally, all dialysis units were and still are mandated to have reverse osmosis water for these dialysis machines, which means these are the most immune compromised, the people with the weakest immune systems because they're chronic disease. They were mandated to have the cleanest water to keep them healthy from infection, you know, mold, yeast, bacteria, viruses. And every month, these dialysis units across the U.S. get inspected and get water testing for these RO filters, which are huge tanks. What's so interesting is since the 70s, we've had thousands of these synthetic compounds added into our lives, which end up in our water. And believe it or not, now those RO filters, those tanks manage compounds that are bigger mm -hmm. and larger and get caught in that RO filter pore size, you know, compounds like phthalates and bisphenols and heavy metals. So what they didn't realize is that it's going to protect things that are going to be developed later on in our history. We, as mere mortals, can get a hold of these RO filters for pretty inexpensive now. And I've waited a long time to shout on mountains about this. That's awesome. Um, also, bottled water. Sorry, I didn't want to forget yeah. that one. Uh, yeah. Plastic is an obvious, like, just this isn't good. Uh, so yeah. I feel like I can throw that one away because it belabors the point. However... Water in glass bottles. If I'm out yeah. and I'm at a restaurant and I order water in a glass bottle, fine. And it depends. Fine if you can get it. I Got mean, it. it's like a it's literally an endangered species to get a bottle served <laughs> at a restaurant. I mean, anywhere else but like the major cities, you might never see a glass bottle anywhere of water because it's more expensive to produce and you're we're seeing less and less of it. Listen, I bring my bottled water to you know, to places, I ple to dinners, to school, mm -hmm. to trip. I have a, a huge stainless steel one, similar to this one for my tea and coffee, um, you know, that is three gallons. So I take it to lacrosse games and all my kids' sports events. And when we travel short, you know, day or two trips, fill up three gallons from water I do. At, you know, I make my water at home. I've created this concept where, you know, you're creating a system yeah. where maybe 80% of the time, if you hope, you do it right. You know, you fill up, you take it with you. But guess what? Life is not perfect. I'm not a purist. I'm a realist. And I understand that you may have to buy bottled water. Yes, you're going to get microplastics. But guess what? When you look at those bottled waters, as I do on Instagram videos in the airport and stuff and show a wall full of choices, you can look at the ingredients area. No one thinks that there's ingredients on a water bottle. But guess what? It'll tell you in ingredients, take a look next time you guys pick up bottles, it'll say where that water or how that water was cleaned. It'll say distilled. It'll say municipal tap, you know, the gall of that, right? Because most bottled waters actually are tap water, believe right. it or not. Or it'll say, you know, cleaned by reverse osmosis. That's so you right. have choices even within places where you don't think you have access to choices. You can also fill up, by the way, I just got really more into taking my my water bottle through security empty, by the way, if it's got water or anything in it, they will steal it and or take it away actually. So make sure to empty it. But when you're on the other side, you can fill up at a lot of these water filters. They are carbon block, but they're excellent and you definitely reduce the, the microplastics for sure. Got it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And make sure to let me know what guests you want to see on in the future.